Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fellow Liberians home and abroad. And to all our wonderful friends, partners, and loved ones around the world, wherever you are at this critical time in our human history, our thoughts and prayers are with you. You are welcome to another edition of Liberia Rising, and I'm Sam Abel Gwensi. Today I want to talk about the power of history. The power of history. I don't want to go into the definition of history and all that. I know a lot of Liberians, you, you already know a lot, you know book, you are highly educated, and that's one of our problems in this country. Probably you could even give me a history class lecture. And some of you probably know better than I do. So that's not what I want to uh, dwell on. I want to, I want to come from another perspective of history, which is so inspiring, which is motivating, which will help us. I want to talk about the power of history. Most time we talk about history, the study of past, present, event, blah, 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 all the kind of thing. But we don't really grasp the essence of the power of history. You know, sometimes we say things we're not really convicted about, we don't really believe. That's our problem. But I want to inspire you on the power of history. And I want to fake from Joshua chapter 22. From verse 11 downwards. I will summarize, but then I will take two verses. The children of Israel have captured the land, allocated the land between tribes. And, and there was a place where the temple should have been built. Many years ago from the time of Abraham, it had been chosen by God. Who was on the west side of the Jordan. And the city will come to be known the city of David, city of Jerusalem. So there are two tribes and a half tribe on the east side of the Jordan River. Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. And they've helped their brethren to settle down. So they're returning on the east. But noticing that they don't have a place of worship. So they come on the west side at the west bank of the Jordan River and build an altar. An altar was meant for sacrifices and for worship and for bringing your burnt offerings. Because there where the presence of God would dwell. That offended the ten tribes. And the ten tribes came to came actually to destroy the two and a half tribes. So when the send a delegation, delegation comes and says, What have you done this? Have you forgotten so soon you are about to turn away from God and follow other gods and worship other gods and worship false gods? The very thing that God destroyed the people that were before us who possessed the land before. And the two and a half tribes said, No, God forbid it would do so. Let God judge us. This altar is not meant for burnt offering, for sacrifices, or for worship. You all know that across the Jordan on the east side, we got no place for worship. So we're building this altar as a memorial and as a witness for our descendants and your descendants. So that tomorrow they wouldn't be saying to us, you have no part in Israel. Because what made, what brought the people together, the center of unity and everything was influenced by God, the temple, and worship. What makes a Jew, a real Jew, is his worship to this one and true God, Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh. So having said that, they said this altar is for a witness, a memorial, nothing more than that. No worship, no burnt offering, no sacrifices. Coming back, and that altar was a history. They didn't have the sophistication we have today with writings, with laptops, with computers, with, with storage uh, devices, all the kind of things. They didn't have it. All they could do was put us on stones. That will be a memorial. That will be a witness for generations after them to know the choices they stood for today. The first thing I want to say about the power of history. History is a memorial. History is a memorial. Guess what? In Joshua 22 verse 27, they say we set in this altar up as a memorial. It will remind our descendants and your descendants. The people live there today with tomorrow in mind. How good was it of them? They live today knowing that tomorrow depended on the choices they made today. When we live our lives, 
when we make choices and decisions, when we make policies, be it in the private sector, in government, in the public sector, even in the church, when we, when we build empires, do we, do we do that with tomorrow in mind? When we gather wealth for ourselves, do we do that with tomorrow in mind? When we make policies, do we do that with tomorrow in mind? You say it's so pathetic and disheartening that we can live today without the slightest idea of the generation to come. When we pass bill, policies, decision making, principles. How can we live today without tomorrow in mind? What would our descendants be reminded of when our generation is mentioned? When they mention this generation, what one thing can they point to and remind and, and remind them of us? What is that unique thing that will identify with us? Will they identify us with corruption? With nepotism? Tribalism? No nationalistic spirit? Lack of vision? Incompetence it are those the things they will identify us with, my people. What is the power of history teaching us? What has it taught us? What have the, the years of war, the massacre, more than 250,000 people lost their life, the mayhem, the destruction, the rape, the violence, and the crime? My father was beaten, he was tired, he was abused, he was tortured. In his home village, my two cursings were ripped before my eyes. It's still every time and with the scene of my father being tortured. Imagine your father and your father, he, he's your symbol of protection, your security. He mediated and abused before you because he stood for those girls. And and, and, and and he said, You can't have them, you can't have them. And they had to subdue in such a manner that's the only way they were able to get those girls. Yeah, I know some of you went to issues more than that what has it taught us i remember drinking from water where he had dead bodies in the water so thirsty i didn't even care i just went to the water it was like reaching paradise what have those things taught us i don't think they've taught us anything they've not reminded us of anything no memorial History is not only a memorial, history is a witness. In verse 34, Joshua 22, they say, It is a witness between us now and them then. A witness between us now and them then. Can you imagine? What are the witnesses of the past? What are the witnesses of the past? Our history. Is our history any witness to us today? They were there. When and where is a witness needed? A witness is needed in the court of law. That is in the court of competence jurisdiction. A witness gives first-hand accounts of an event, a witness in the past. An event that those trying to adjudicate now weren't there. But their best judgment depends on the witness now taking the witness stand. Beloved, our history has taken the witness stand today. Are we listening to what he's saying to us? He was there. He experienced it firsthand. He saw it and experienced things that we didn't. He saw it and experienced what marginalization can do. History saw it and experienced what nepotism, tribalism, incompetence, getting job not based on merit can do. You know, when, when public offices and positions are not performance oriented, history knows what it can result to. Economic hardship, desperation, history knows why it can result to. If only given the chance by turning back the hands of time, I strongly believe our history would do it differently. If the likes of Todman, Tober, Doe, Taylor, and even Madame Sally would take the witness stand in the present, armed with the evidences and experiences of the past, they would do it differently. The power of history. What is it teaching us? Church leaders, bishop of the past, what have we learned from them? What have we learned from Mother Duclay? What have we learned from Mother May Roberts? The Archbishop Michael Papla Francis and the lives. What have we learned from those people? We are pastors and church people. What have we learned from our politicians? What have we learned from the leaders who try to do well, who begin well, but they didn't end well? There's a memorial and there's a witness. 
What did we learn from our nation being birthed in the church? We can be a secular state, that's all right, but you got to know where you come from. That's the only way you can know where you're going. What did we learn from the origin of Thanksgiving and nice on fast and prayer? What did we learn when back then Muslims and Christians would go to the same school, no problem. I had some good Muslim friends on the mission school with me. Today they are still Muslim. They were not compelled to be to be Muslim, to be Christians. What did we learn from leaders whose leadership were on their mind back then? Today, instead of promoting freedom of worship, we are promoting religion. What have we learned from those things? What is the witness and the memorial? That's the power of history. Liberal rising is possible and it works. If we understand the power of history, history is a witness, history is a memorial. Is if this video and other videos continue to be a motivation and inspiration to you, you can like, you can share, you can leave your comment. God bless you. It has been Sam Ever Wissing.